Hey guys, going to take a look at the ubiquitous LM386 audio amplifier IC. Going to do some power measurements, talk about layout issues. You know, a lot of people build these things and they pop and buzz and they get distortion and things. And it's really not a problem with the chip, it's the layout of the circuit. You really have to do it right and uh, we'll experiment with that. And uh, like I say, we'll do power measurements and all that. Um, I'm shooting on a new camera I bought. Canon PowerShot ELF or ELPH, whatever they call it. 115IS. Practically brand new. I got it at one of those check and cash places. <laughs> I guess somebody got it as a gift maybe and uh, yeah, they needed quick cash and they turned it in for their drugs or uh, maybe they had a rent payment or something. And they, they usually don't give you any money for these things, maybe 20, 30 bucks, but I saw it in there and got it for 40 bucks. You can buy these things new, you know, they're old model for $80 now. Really happy with the audio quality of it, but... Uh, don't want to get off on a tangent here, so uh, let's talk about the LM386. Well, my first experience with this chip was probably 30 years ago. I was getting into electronics and audio and things like that. You know, as a teenager, I really uh, you know, needed something to play with. And of course, Radio Shack was down the road. And they sold... They've been selling these things. They still sell these chips, even today. And I, I think they started carrying them back in the 70s. This is a uh, National Semiconductor product. Though I think other uh, companies have produced it. It's a, uh, it's, like I say, it's a good little chip for building small amplifiers maybe you want to build your own computer speakers it'd work for doing that but it does have its limitations though and we'll talk about that as well well as far as distortion it's actually pretty close to hi-fi but doesn't quite make it you know my criteria for hi-fi <clears throat> excuse me um the amplifier Total harmonic distortion across the power band and frequency band must be under 0.1% or one-tenth of a percent of total harmonic distortion. This chip, across its power band, it's well under 1% and it's just scraping the bottom in probably the most audible range. <clears throat> so it's not bad, but doesn't quite make it. Here's the frequency band and these measurements are at 6 volts. Might do better at 9 volts but uh, you know up here is the 1% line so in much of the audible band it's well under 1% and I really question if you can hear distortion that's so low under uh, 1% you know I don't know. It, some it depends on the music as well. Most music, it would take well over one percent, maybe one two percent. But some music with piano or flute, um, it's you might be able to detect it at lower levels. But at this level, I just still doubt it. Now the one limitation of this amplifier. You really shouldn't use it with 4 ohm loads, and you can see that right here. As you increase the power supply voltage, the output power should go up quite a bit. And we're getting some shadows from the kitty, the Snickers. We'll take a look outside. But as you see here, it doesn't really go up at all. I mean, just a sliver, but. That tells you right there that the amplifier cannot handle 4 ohm loads. Don't even monkey with 4 ohm loads. And here, 8 ohm loads. 
you're good up until 9 volts. There's a bit of increase at 12 volts, but the chip's got to dissipate quite a bit of power. And it's not really a power dissipating type design. So, uh, 9 volts, 8 ohms, and you're golden. That's where you probably should use this chip to get the most power. What? What do you want? <laughs> okay, well, 9 volts, 8 ohms. We'll do some power measurements there. Give it a quick listening test, and we'll talk about layout. So, come right back. Okay, I have it all breadboarded and everything. And uh, I got the uh, power supply decoupling capacitor right close to the pins. And uh, everything looks pretty good, so uh, let's give it a listen. nasty I don't know if the camera picks that up or not but there's kind of a fuzzy distortion sound what is the problem well I purposely neglected my signal and power grounds and I see a lot of people doing that and I'm, in some cases the thing is so bad it oscillates and sounds really crappy but uh, this one wasn't as bad but it still sounds fuzzy and nasty to me I don't want any output or power supply ground signals flowing in the same path that a signal ground flows in because that's going to cause distortion and even oscillations okay so I'll rewire this thing and come back and see what we get okay so here's what I've done at pin 4, which is the ground pin on the IC, right at that point, I mean, no wires going a distance, but right at that point, I split the grounds off into separate zones. Here's the decoupling, power supply decoupling capacitor. It comes in at its own point. Here is the power ground for the output and the power supply. It has its own point. And most importantly, the input comes off at its own zone, own grounding zone. So the, uh, the bypass capacitor, which is part of the input circuit, if you look at the amp amplifier's internal schematic, the uh, negative feedback is just connected to ground in this chip. And also the input ground comes through this same in um, grounding zone. So what that does is keep the input ground signals separate from the power ground signals. So you don't have any of those power grounds conducting in the input ground. So if you connected your um, input over here, you also have the output flowing in that same ground and that little bit of resistance in the conductor will mean that that's going to raise a point here, the voltage at this point, and it's going to cause distortion. So, doing this will keep the um, amplifier from uh, you know, sputtering, oscillating, or just having that fuzzy distortion, and you can use it to its full capability. Okay, well, it's really hard to see, but Here's pin 4, there's a, the decoupling cap. This is the ground for the power supply. It's going off in its own direction. And here is the, um, the grounds for the signal. So it goes off in its own direction and that just goes over to the bypass cap. Alright, let's give it a listen. Perfect. No buzzing. 
perfect clear signal much better see how important that is if you can get one of these lm386s to sound nice and clean with a proper grounding you're set for moving on to other amplifiers because this chip is pretty sensitive to crappy grounding all right well i'm going to move on to the power test now okay i put on the non-inductive 8 ohm resistor connected that to where the speaker was connected i set the power supply to be exactly nine volts and uh, got the scope connected to the resistor so we can measure the uh, the output okay at one kilohertz i turn it up and it's starting to clip I'll turn it back down now you can see there's a fairly large step because the way the volume controls on these they step in discrete levels It'd be better if i didn't have to deal with that like add a potentiometer or something but eh for now this will work okay so what are we getting here 1.9 yeah 1.92 volts rms okay so i'll punch that in 1.92 you have to square that divided by our load impedance of eight ohms and we're getting 0.46 watts not too bad now if I could better measure this you know these boards have a little bit of resistance and um, get something where I can you know home it in closer to the pre-clipping level I probably can get um, somewhere between 0.6 and 0.7 watts out of this thing 9 volt supply 8 ohm load in fact, I measured it before, you know, a few years ago when I was getting like 0.66 or 0.67 or something like that watts of output. So, yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, it's not going to be screaming loud, but you know how the logarithmic nature of hearing is. You know, around a watt is going to depending on the efficiency of your speaker you know you can get a decent amount of decibels so and i guess that wraps this video up just wanted to show you uh, the ubiquitous old lm386 how to lay it out properly you know pretty much applies to any electronic circuit including digital and uh see what kind of power this thing can make thanks for watching